What's up, savages? I want to welcome you guys to the podcast. I'm going to do a quick little intro to this one because I feel it deserves it. Um, I had Berlin Davis on probably in January when we were absolutely having the worst weather in, I don't know, as long as I can remember. There was thunderstorms, there was lightning, there was heavy rain, it was snowing in some areas. It was crazy. It was madness. And so we have bad connection everywhere. And unfortunately, this uh, podcast had some interruptions in it. I took out as much as I could, but there are still some frozen spots. But I didn't want to not get it out there. I think Berlin is an awesome individual. She's a savage young lady who is out there doing jiu-jitsu tournaments, crushing it in jiu-jitsu tournaments, doing wrestling. This girl is a savage, the badass representative of being a young savage. So I wanted to get that out there to you guys. Um, so yeah, there are some interruptions, there are some freezing spots, and I try to do my best to edit them out, but I wanted to get this to, to you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Sorry for the uh, you know a couple of delays here and there. Berlin Davis is awesome. I wanted to get this out there. So again, watch it, enjoy it. If you guys ever have any questions, reach out to me. Stay safe, stay savage, stay hard to kill. And then um, then I started wrestling when I got into high school. I didn't wrestle my freshman year because it was like COVID and there wasn't really anything. So I was focusing on jiu-jitsu still. But no, this is my second year wrestling and I love it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now since you've start, been doing jiu-jitsu for nine years, how many medals and how many belts are all behind you right there? I have no idea. I have four belts one of them's at fight strong yeah so i have two naga belts and then i have this a small grappling x belt and then i have no idea how many medals are there <laughs> that's awesome when did you how long were you doing jiu-jitsu before you started competing Prob oh my first competition i did after three months of training and i just went in there and i just got demolished by everyone <laughs> And was then that, I waited like a year. Was that in gi or no gi or both? That was no gi. Yeah. That was like it was like a sub fighter tournament. So one of like Les Mira's ones. It's wow. like one of like the local ones that are kind of smaller, but they have like not that's like you like kids can do like ankle attacks and like attacks and stuff. Yeah. So then you waited, you said for like a year before you competed again? I waited, yeah, like after my first full year of doing it, I think it was, then I did uh, an NABJJ tournament, and I think I had like one or two girls in the first tournament I won. Wow, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, when Did you just compete in the uh, the finals in Del Mar? Yeah, I, yeah, I did. I, wait, what did I compete in? I competed in two divisions, I think, yeah, and then I won both of them. Yeah. So awesome. I had one girl in no gi and then like five in gi. How do you feel when, I'm assuming you haven't won them all, how do you feel when you get second, third, or you don't get on the podium at all? How do you, how do you deal with that? So like, obviously it'll depend on how I feel like I did myself. So if I feel like I did my best and I put in my all, then it's like, okay, like I know what I need to work on off and it feels like I went out there and I could have done that I'll take it a lot harder so like my rest born one season so that first loss of the season was like really like gnarly to me because I feel like I felt like I could or if I fought her again. so yeah. I was like it was just like really like set me not set me back but then like made me like realize like, more like the, like what I need to work on and go into it better yeah I asked because I just started I used to do MMA back in the day um and I started competing in jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. I'm 47 so thank you um so I had two golds this year and then I finished third on um this last final one and the guy didn't score a point on me I scored two points for the takedown and then we were hand fighting the whole time I was in his guard and I got called for stalling. So he got two points. And because he scored two points, you know, the last score, he won. Did and I was so, yeah, I, I went back because you know how they film or they record the uh, match right there. And they send it to you later. 
and I watched it and rewatched it, I was blown away. But the point is I should take defeat the same way as I take victory, but it's a hard pill to swallow. I don't like losing. Yeah. And I, you know, everybody like, I have jiu-jitsu coaches who are very like, yeah, win, win, win. I have others like, well, it's the experience and you you learned a lot out of it. And I'm like, damn it. Yeah. It's a lot there's more fun to, to, fun to win. <laughs> what was that? So there's definitely like a difference of like coaches and how like they approach like the sport and like winning and losing and stuff. Yeah. But I mean, you already sound more wise than I do at your young age than I am. I, I, I'm I still bitter about it, as you can tell. But uh, oh, yeah, I, I would be mad at myself. But it's something like, I mean, I still like, like at World, I did Nogi Worlds a few weeks ago and I, in the finals for um, the absolute, for like the open weight. And I was just like pissed because like the girl I fought wasn't even good. She was yeah. super heavyweight. I was I got like three elbows to the face from like her being on mount. It's like the ref just sat there and like didn't even like call that. But it was like I've, I've uh beat her at Phoenix Open before, so it was like tough match. But it's just like it was kind of dumb. Like I just got for five minutes. Like, I shouldn't have let her got there in the first place. So yeah, do you, are you still training with Adam over at Fight Strong? Yeah, I still train with Adam. Um, not as much right now because it's like wrestling season, so I'm like focused on that. But I've been with Adam like my whole career. Yeah, how did how was the transition from jujitsu to wrestling? The transition was not that hard for me, except like fighting off, like don't go on your back. Yeah. So like that was hard because I'm like a, I'm a guard player, so I'm always on my back. So like being like taken down and then going to my stomach is weird but it obviously like if I hadn't done jujitsu I don't think like I'd be where I am in wrestling I probably wouldn't even have joined wrestling so it had a like a good impact on it because like I already I've competed like I have the I'm aggressive with it and like some of the stuff is similar so it's like like the like the sport in general like helps each other out for sure yeah, was that always your goal to start jiu-jitsu and then go into wrestling, or is it something that, you know, you wanted to pursue after you were successful in jiu-jitsu? So I I wanted um like jiu-jitsu is obviously like my number one, and then jiu-jitsu or I did wrestling to help my jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. Go to college for wrestling, and like doing that I just have to back a little bit because it's like. That takes a lot of time, and there's no college, and then wrestling in college as well. So, but my main goal is always just still so, uh, wrestling, just kind of helping it, I guess. Yeah. Do you have any goals of going into MMA or or taking it to any other level? For MMA, right now, I'm not like hundred percent sure if I want because like. Like I I've done like boxing on that fight strong and stuff, and it's it's fun. Like I'm going to Thailand some to train there, so like I'm doing like jujitsu wrestling Muay Thai there. So yeah. we'll see how I find there, and then we'll probably see probably, but not this year probably. Yeah, how is it growing up? You you said you're 16 years old. How is it growing up, and what do people think of you being in jujitsu? Because I know my you know Kingston is nine years old. Some people look at it, is him even being a boy, as an aggressive sport. It's teaching them bad tactics and it's teaching them, you know, how, you know, how, mm. they're worried it's going to be, he's going to be a bully. How did you deal with that growing up being so successful in jujitsu? When I was young, I would really, like talk about it and I like kept like my like social away from it. Mm. I, just, I don't know why. I just didn't like mix it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mix it, but like, as I, I wrestle for school, so everyone knows, and like, people will come up to me, and then they'll like, get, like, they think it's cool and stuff, but it's like, still, it's like, sometimes I'm like, like, I don't know, like, how to say it, but like, I try not to bring it up myself, but other people will, and so usually it's like, they they know that they can't like say anything bad because they think like I can beat them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's it gets where like 
is like now post it more like on like my like socials uh like away from jiu-jitsu like on my like with all my school friends and like that like people are like oh yeah don't mess with her like that you know yeah so then that goes to my next question have you ever been bullied or have you ever been picked on or found yourself in those situations no i have not i think it's because of doing jiu-jitsu now and stuff yeah what would you say are some of the benefits for because there's a lot of young kids out there who are victims of being bullied or they're you know they see they're, you know going to school is a tough thing anyway and they're nervous to start learning jiu-jitsu yeah. or maybe mma or any kind of martial arts what would you say to them if they're on the fence of whether it's a good idea or not to pursue it i think it's a great idea because like not only like it teaches you like defense and then it also it has like um like discipline self-discipline and there's a lot of like like other aspects that go into it like just like being in the environment in general it's like a safe place I'd say like when I'm on the mat I feel safe I'm safe with my teammates I'm safe with my coaches and I'm learning something that I enjoy and something that will like benefit me in the long run and so I always think it's a positive like I've tried to get all my friends into it. Some of them have, some of them come and go, but it's like, there, there's a few that will stick to it. But I think sticking to it and even joining is like the best, one of the best decisions I ever made in my life. Cause I know like, I don't even know what I'd be doing if I didn't do it. Like I could be just like another teenager sitting on my, or sleeping in, just sit, going out with my friends whenever I want, coming home whenever, you know. Yeah. But it teaches you like, there's goals and there's more than just, like people in life you have goals for your just going out and doing whatever so you said you you your dad was did he train in it or was he a coach or how how was your your, yeah. your father involved and got so, you involved? How was, was he trained for? He trained for like 10 years for jiu-jitsu so he's a purple belt he trained at gia bell mm-hmm. and then he's been to thailand and trained at uh, tiger muay thai like three times i think yeah and then um so he like has bad arthritis in his wrist he doesn't do it as much but like he doesn't that much because like he can't even bend his they don't bend and so it's like hard what? to do that he can't bend his what you're breaking up he can't bend his wrist oh, okay so like don't then yeah, that that's one of the joys of training. I'm old too. I'm 47, so mm-hmm. I always have something hurting, something cracking, something this and that. But like yeah. I, I just posted today on social that um, I took a week off to let my body heal, and it turns out my body just wants jujitsu because when I went back, I felt so much better. I, I you know I love I love it so much that it's just like I'm never gonna stop. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the injuries definitely take its toll what what significant injuries have you had and had to overcome during your uh jiu-jitsu when you're wrestling um I have like some pains in my wrist but they go they come and go so it's not like I really stopped anything mm-hmm. and then I had like and like the ball of your foot I had a calcium like buildup, and so I couldn't like bend my toes or anything so I went to the doctors for that and they put me up for two weeks and so I was out, I think I only lasted like a week and a half. And then I called them up and I was like, I'm fine. <laughs> but like, it comes and goes for that too. Like sometimes it'll hurt, sometimes it won't. And then I don't think I've never like had like bad injuries. Like maybe like my back, I hurt my lower back before. And I thought it was healed. And then I did a tournament and then it just was made it worse. Yeah. But What's yeah. your longest time you've taken Nothing. off to try to heal? Um, a week and a half. Yeah. I'd say. Yeah, it's tough. Like there was a tournament. Co- there was a a duel or a wrestling match coming up, and I was like, I need to wrestle in it. So I was like, I'm fine. Yeah. So doctors are always conservative. They're going to tell you when I go to the doctor. They'll say, I'm a, I surf a lot. They, so they're going to say, don't surf, don't do jujitsu, don't do MMA, and don't do anything. It's like, 
well, why do I even pay you all that money just to tell me not to do anything? I mean, that's just, I, I stopped going to the doctors for a lot of my ailments and just say, hey, screw it. I'm going to fight through it. Yeah. But that, but you're younger than I am. You, you can probably listen to the doctors more than I can. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's see. Do you, are you still coaching over at Fight Strong or do you have any, uh, do you coach anywhere? I coach, I'll coach at Fight Strong in like off season for wrestling. So as soon as like, I think it ends in like February, March. So as soon as that ends, then I'll go back there and I'll help coach and everything. Mm. And did you just get promoted recently? I, I think I saw on your social media you got promoted. Um, I think that like last May. Yeah. So as soon as I turned 16, or right before I turned 16, I got my blue belt. So my birthday's in May, so like right around May. Okay. So when you train, how do you focus? Do you focus on no gi maybe one day and then gi the next, or do you mix it up? How How is your schedule looking? So, like, the classes are, like, there's two gis and then two no gis a week, so I'll just alternate. But, like, for, like, myself, my focus is no gi because I feel like there's more of a future in no gi. Like, there's ADCC's no gi and everything, and that's obviously, like, the ultimate goal. Like, my, like, I'll always be, he was my favorite long time, but now it's, like, now that I'm getting, I'm trying to, like, mainly focus on Nogi. Yeah. Who are some of your mentors or some of the people that you look up to in the, in the jiu-jitsu and wrestling world? I look up to the total a lot. Um, I've trained with them a few times. I just, like, I like the way, um, I like their, like, style of jiu-jitsu and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Mason Fowler. And um, who else? Um, it like the type, like sometimes I'll be into like a people and then look like that I'll be like into someone else for a little bit. Yeah. So and yeah. Has any promotions like won or any of those kind of promotions reached out to you yet? Not. I don't know if they can reach out to. You you're 18 for that stuff okay but i'm not sure but like i've done like super fast like just as like anyone can do those you know yeah would that be something you would wrench and I, I just watched one or actually both Rotola brothers on uh what like a month ago compete is that something that you would be interested in competing in yes i love to compete in that yeah do you have sponsors and and people who are supporting you right now yeah, so one of my um so I've been with for probably like two years is Wild Bar. So it's a new, a new bar, like you know, before, after training, like a good like healthy option. And then I have a few companies like uh clothing, geese and stuff that I'm in touch with right now. And then I just um got a new sponsor, so it's super fresh C B D. So it's like CBD oils and just like stuff to like help my body. Yeah. And then I have assassins who I've been with them probably the longest. So it's like they promote me a lot and then it's just yeah. Yeah. What are your other hobbies besides, you know, the uh combat sports? Do you you surf, do you skate? What are what are your other things that you like to do? Um I, I used to surf, I used to skate, but like I'm just worried about getting hurt, especially with skating. <laughs> yeah. But now like I don't know, I like I'm into shoes a lot, like Jordans and stuff. Yeah. So I'm gonna probably start like flipping. So like when you, you buy sneakers when they release and then eventually like, they get expensive and then you sell them for more. Yeah. So that's definitely something I wanna get into, but it's mainly jiu jitsu and wrestling. And then taking out, uh, hanging out with my friends when I have time. And then uh, spearfishing and like fishing and stuff. Oh, wow. Do you, do you do that out here locally or do you go somewhere and do the spearfishing? Um, we have a house in Mexico, so in Baja. And so two weeks every summer, that's when I go out. And so um, just it's like a dive trip. Surfing too. But I have 
I haven't really started getting into spear fishing, so this summer is definitely something I want to like pick up and like get good. At. Yeah, where so, where's your house in Baja? Because we used to live in Cabo. We just moved back here a year ago, but we go to Cabo all the time. It's uh, Bahia Tortuga, so it's like that's north of Abreos. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's love, like halfway. We love Mexico, and we're thinking about going back now with this weather. I I look at the weather; it's going to be like raining and all this for ten more days, and I'm over it. I mean, like rarely get weather like this. I know, but the surf is like ten to fifteen foot coming tomorrow. It should be really big, but you can't go out in it because it's too nasty and stormy and. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what would you say to any kids right now? Like how has, you know, I think we kind of went over a little bit about how to get kids into it, but I, I see your your social media and I love it. Like I try to inspire families to get involved in learning self-defense and how to protect themselves. Um, so maybe you can tell your perspective of being a 16 year old badass competitor. Um, what's the importance, especially for a young lady um, of learning to defend yourself and being a protector and the confidence it brings to you, all the things that fighting has benefited to you. What can you tell people about that? Um, I'd say um, that it brings like a lot of self-confidence being able to like know that you can defend yourself and like, yeah, there's like, you'll go through times when you're like, like if I'm on like, not doing so good at like it like if I am not doing as good in tournaments or something like it like definitely sets you back it makes it like like m- like not like brings you down but like lowers like how you feel but then you just got to keep going it's like consistency is key like obviously the more you train the better you are but I think that like the girls community in jiu-jitsu being as small as it is like we definitely need to like pick each other up help each other out because we could grow it we can make the sport grow but it takes like to do that and so I think that the more that more people to but I think that it's just like we need to be stronger as like the girls as a whole like in the community of jiu-jitsu so that we can help the sport and everything have you ever had to use any of your training in uh you know, in a live situation out in the streets or out school or anything? No, I like, we'll goof around with like my friends at some stuff, but it's not like, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, I think because I always promote self-defense as once you know it and once you have the skills, you obviously you never want to get in a confrontation, but the confidence that it builds, like you can tell people who know how to handle themselves, right? You can just go out, and go to the cop, get some coffee and say, oh, that guy probably knows what they're doing. Or that woman has some confidence. She probably, you know, knows what she's doing. So I think for fighting for me and what I try to tell people is, you know, it's not just going in there and fighting and rolling. It's, you know, situational awareness. Uh-huh. It just, I think fighting just sharpens all of your skills for survival. And I think at 16 years mm-hmm. old, you are way ahead of the group. And I love what you're doing. I love seeing you on social media and competing and obviously look behind you you got all those accolades and it's awesome so if people wanted to reach out to you and maybe they had some questions or be inspired by you how do people find you on social media um on my instagram so it's berlin underscore davis bjj so you guys can all anytime just write me a message or whatever i go live every once in a while so you can ask me questions on there too but a lot through my dms on Instagram it's like the main thing okay well Berlin I, I thank you very much for coming on um, again you're a huge inspiration to not only young people but older people need to watch this and get inspired and, and like you said in this you know consistency keep showing up keep putting in the work I think is a great message and again thank you for coming on and I really appreciate it thank you for having me all right see you later thank you Berlin bye bye